Hello, so in the last capsule, recall that we proved that the Fourier transform as an operator on the Schwarz space S of R is continuous. That is, with respect to its new topology that we introduced on S of R. Why is it that we are interested in this? Because in chapter 4, we already finished proving that F maps to F hat. The Fourier transform is continuous with respect to the L2 topology. You see the Schwarz space S of R is sitting inside L2. So L2 is a metric space. L2 is a normed linear space. And it receives a topology from L2 and with respect to that topology, the Fourier transform was continuous. And we also saw that the Fourier transform maps L1 to L infinity and that's also continuous. And it is continuous as a mapping from L2 to L2. Isn't that enough? Why do we want this new notion of continuity with respect to this topology that we have just introduced? There are many reasons for that. Earlier in, in the earlier chapters, chapter 4, we were able to define Fourier transform on L1 and L2. Once you have it on L1 and L2, there is a way to define it on LP for P between 1 and 2. And that's all we can get by classical methods. What we need is to go beyond L2 and we want to define it for any LP, not just for P between 1 and 2. And even beyond these LP spaces, we want to define it to a large class of entities. So how far can we go? We can even define the Fourier transform on objects like e to the power i t a, where a is a real number, which doesn't have any decay. In fact, we're going to define Fourier transforms of polynomials and functions that grow like polynomials. A polynomial is not going to be in L infinity, unless it's a constant, of course. Certain ideas from functional analysis are required, and these ideas are called duality arguments. The class of objects to which we extend it is the class of tempered distributions. So the class of entities uh, on which we are going to define the Fourier transform are tempered distributions. There is an adjective tempered. Distributions are generalized functions. The notion of distributions is quite broad. And we are going to look at a certain subclass of distributions. We are not going to study all the distributions. We are going to only study the tempered distributions in this particular course. The general theory of distributions, of course, you can read Strichards or Hormander or any of the other references. So what are tempered distributions? In chapter 7, we talked about continuous maps between normed linear spaces. In particular, R itself is a normed linear space. The complex plane is a normed linear space. So we can take uh, linear transformations from the normed linear space to R or C and talk about its continuity. We shall now generalize this from normed linear spaces to topological vector spaces such as the space S of R, the space of Schwarz functions. A tempered distribution, definition 108, a tempered distribution is a continuous linear map from SR to C. That is, it is a continuous linear map defined on the Schwarz space. Continuity here refers to the continuity that we have defined just now. When does Fn converge to F in the Schwarz space? It's a very strong notion of convergence. In this strong sense, we are talking about continuity. The set of all such continuous linear maps is denoted by S prime of R, as always in a functional analysis, when V is a topological vector space, V prime will be the dual space, often denoted by V star. So, tempered distributions are the dual of S of R. The dual of S of R is denoted by S prime of R. And S prime of R being a dual space is a vector space. So if V is a topological vector space, the set of all continuous linear transformations from V to C is denoted by V star, is called the dual of V. However, it may happen that V star may consist only of the zero element. How do I know that there is a, any linear transformation at all? Of course, a zero map 
is certainly a linear transformation. It is of course continuous being a constant map, but it may happen that that may be the only continuous linear map from V to C. Such examples exist and one such example is available on page 213 of the book of Goffman and Pedrick that I have already mentioned earlier in this course. This is published by Prentice Hall in 1965. 60 years have passed and yet the book still remains a gem. You will get rich dividends when you read this book of Goffman and Pedrick. There are highly non-trivial theorems being proven in Goffman Pedrick. He gives you the space and the space is basically the space of all measurable functions on the closed interval 0. So take the closed interval 0 1 and take the Lebesgue measure, nothing fancy. And f is measurable, g is measurable, f minus g is measurable, mod f minus g is measurable. Now take mod f minus g divided by 1 plus mod f minus g. That's a bounded measurable function. Because it's a bounded measurable function, integral mod f minus g upon 1 plus mod f minus g is finite. And this integral you denote it by dfg. The distance between f of f and g is this integral. That's a metric. And the vector space operations are continuous with respect to this metric. And this metric is even complete. Cauchy sequences converge. So it's a nice complete metric space, but unfortunately, its dual space is just the zero element. So there may not be anything interesting in V star. So how do I know that there is anything at all which is interesting in S prime? This pathology that is exhibited in this example on page 213 of Goffman Pedrick does not happen with S of R. S of R is a very nice topological vector space. It's not a pathological one. There are plenty of elements in S prime of R. So tempered distributions exist in great profusion. Why is it that it is so rich? Of course, we are going to produce examples of tempered distributions. But the fact that it's a rich class, S prime of R is a rich class, is important. What is the secret? behind this richness. The secret lies in the Hahn-Banach theorem. Hahn-Banach theorem, remember, in functional analysis is a convexity theorem and it applies when the spaces have some kind of convexity properties and the relevant property that we are looking at is local convexity. So what is a locally convex topological vector space? It's a topological vector space first and foremost. It has an origin and the origin has a local base, right? You must have a local base of convex neighborhoods. So when a topological vector space V has the property that the origin has a local base of convex neighborhoods, then you call it a locally convex topological vector space. And this Schwarz space S of R is an example of a locally convex topological vector space. Why is local convexity important? Because take a convex neighborhood of the origin and you can have the Minkowski gauge functional and that becomes a seminorm. With that seminorm, apply the Hahn-Banach theorem and you'll get a good supply of elements in the dual space. I've given you a, a brief uh, account as to why the space of tempered distributions is pretty rich. That's a functional analysis way of approaching the problem. But for us, we are going to take a more concrete route. We're going to produce concrete examples of tempered distributions. The most basic example is the Dirac delta and its close cousins. What are the cousins of the Dirac delta? The derivative of the Dirac delta and there's a distribution called PV1 over X and there's a heaviside function, the signum function. These are close cousins of the Dirac delta. So first let us define the Dirac delta. The Dirac delta is a map from S of R to C given by F maps to F of 0. So what is the linear transformation? The input is the Schwarz function f of x, rapidly decreasing function f of x. The output is simply the value of the function at the origin. This is evidently continuous with respect to the topology of S, S of R. What is the topology of S of R? Remember fn converges to f means what? fn converges to f means it in particular fn converges to f uniformly and much more of course. 
in so uniform convergence is a consequence if fn converges to f uniformly fn of 0 will converge to f of 0 straight away so the, the dirac delta is a continuous linear form on s of r that's a basic example of a tempered distribution now let us see the next example take a polynomial q of x q of x is a fixed polynomial take an element f in s of r take a rapidly decreasing function and take a rapidly decreasing function f and multiply it with a polynomial what happens qx times f of x is again rapidly decreasing so multiplication by q of x is a, so certainly gives you again an element of s of r but once i take this product qx into f of x because it is in the schwarz space it is integrable so integrate qx times f of x over the real numbers so f maps to the integral qx fx that's a linear transformation from s of r to the real numbers or the complex numbers that's continuous to check continuity how do you check that fn converges to 0 will mean the integral qx fnx must converge to 0 that is display 10.4 that you see because of linearity a linear map is continuous even only if it is continuous at the origin so we need to check continuity at the origin so we have to show that limit as n tends to infinity integral over r qx fnx dx goes to 0 but how do we do that multiply and divide the usual trick multiply and divide by 1 plus x squared to the power n multiply and divide by 1 plus x squared to the power n and what do you get after multiplication by 1 plus x squared to the power n and multiplication by qx that is call, called the product of these two polynomials rx we know that supremum of fnx rnx goes to zero but definition of convergence and now estimate so what do we get we get that integral qx fnx dx mod less than or equal to i multiply and divide by 1 plus x squared to the power n and there is rx times fnx and and take the supremum of this and take it outside the integral and the integral of dx upon 1 plus x squared to the power n that's an innocent constant and the other factor supremum of mod fnx rx over r goes to 0 so that proves that you can multiply by a polynomial and integrate that gives you a continuous linear transformation or it gives an element of the dual space or you get a tempered distribution in other words now let us take the next example the schwarz space s of r sits inside lp of r for every p right every p becomes equal to 1 now suppose if i take a capital f which is in lq suppose i take a capital f in lq then i can multiply capital f with a little f which i pick from the schwarz space schwarz space is sitting inside lp so little f is in lp capital f is in lq what is q q is the dual exponent 1 upon p plus 1 upon q equal to 1 q is the exponent dual to p and then the integral fx times capital fx dx that's a real number so f maps to this integral display 10.5 that gives you a tempered distribution so in short every lq function gives you a tempered distribution namely take the lq function multiply by little f and integrate over the real numbers in the previous example we multiplied by polynomial and we integrated in this example we multiply by capital fx and we integrate in these examples we said that the distributions 10.4 and 10.5 are represented by qx and f of x in short the distribution 10.5 is represented by f of x and the distribution 10.4 is represented by the polynomial q of x in in other words we shall make no distinction between the distribution given by 10.3 and qx and we shall make no distinction between the distribution 10.5 and capital f of x but we have to check one small detail 
And what is that small detail? How do I know that if I take two elements of LQ, suppose I take two distinct elements G and H in LQ, they may represent the same distribution or the resulting distribution if instead of G and I take little h. Do I get two distinct distributions or do I get the same distribution? Is this identification an injective mapping? So if I take two elements from LQ and look at the corresponding distributions and the corresponding distributions are equal, then the original two functions were also equal. In other words, integral over R fx gx dx equal to integral over r fx hx dx for all f should imply g equal to h almost everywhere or you put capital F of x equal to gx minus hx and the hypothesis is integral over r 10.6 capital fx little fx dx is 0 for all f in the Schwarz class and the conclusion should be that capital F must be 0 almost everywhere. So we have to conclude that capital F is 0 almost everywhere. We need to use standard techniques from measure theory. How do you show that capital F is 0 almost everywhere? Look at the points where capital Fx is bigger than 0. Look at the points where capital Fx is less than 0. We shall show that the measure of this set A where F of X is positive is 0. Suppose not. Suppose this measure is positive. Suppose this measure is positive, then how do we arrive at a contradiction? Pick a compact subset B of A of positive. Every set of positive measure will have a compact subset of positive measure. Also, I'm going to assume that P is not infinity and P is not 1. These extreme cases P equal to infinity and P equal to 1 are left as an exercise for the audience. We know that capital F is in some Lebesgue class say LP I'm assuming that P is not infinity and P is not 1 so because P is not infinity and P is not equal to 1 capital F to the power P minus 1 that is going to be in LQ where Q is a conjugate exponent and Q is not going to be infinity because P is not 1 Q is not going to be infinity and P is not infinity so F to the power P minus 1 makes sense. So I need to exclude p equal to infinity because I'm going to cook up this f to the power p minus 1 and I need to exclude p equal to 1 because I want the conjugate exponent should be in LQ and Q should not be infinity. Remember, I repeat, the Schwarz space S of R is dense in LQ provided Q is not infinity. The Schwarz space is not, I repeat, dense in L infinity. L infinity is very big space. L infinity, L infinity of the real line is not a separable space and the Schwarz space is not going to be dense. It's going to be dense in LP for P not equal to infinity. So take a sequence Fn in S of R and that sequence converging to F to the P minus 1 times the characteristic function of B. And this particular thing certainly belongs to LQ. So what do we have over here? Let us estimate. So mod integral capital Fx Fnx minus F to the P minus 1x characteristic function of the interval B. That is less than or equal to apply the holders inequality the LP norm of F times the LQ norm of the other piece. But this LQ norm collapses to 0. Remember? Uh, 1.6 will now give you that integral of capital F of P times the characteristic function of B is 0. What is it that we, we have? We have assumed that F is positive. Remember on this set B, F is positive on A and B is a subset of A and that's a contradiction because B has positive measure and the function is positive on this set. And there remains the case p equal to 1 and p equal to infinity, which I am leaving it as an exercise to the audience. The argument would have been much simpler in case capital F were to be continuous, but we don't have that over here. So that completes this argument. If integral of capital Fx into little fx is 0 for all f, then capital F must be 0. So that gives us another example of a temporal distribution. Now the derivative of the Dirac delta, delta naught prime, 
How do I define delta naught prime? I define it to be f maps to minus f prime 0. That is also going to be continuous because if fn converges to f in the Schwarz class, the derivatives will converge uniformly. So, fn prime of 0 will converge to f prime of 0. So, this also defines a tempered distribution. It is a derivative of the Dirac distribution. Now, another example is if u is a tempered distribution, suppose if I already give you a tempered distribution and how do I multiply a tempered distribution u by a polynomial q? Very simple, you simply throw the polynomial along with f. So, I am given a tempered distribution u and I am going to create a new distribution qx times u. So, I have to tell you what this new distribution does to a function f in the Schwarz class. What does it do to this function f? Multiply the function by the polynomial and then apply my u. This new distribution is called qx times u. So this tells you how to multiply a tempered distribution by a polynomial and 10.7 is also going to be a continuous map from the Schwarz space to the real line. So, you need to prove the continuity of this map 10.7 that furnishes another example of a tempered distribution. Show that cosine of e to the power x and sine of e to the power x are tempered distributions. Of course, they are L infinity functions and every L infinity function is a tempered distribution because every LP function is a tempered distribution by the previous slides. Is there a tempered distribution u which is represented by e to the power x? In other words, is there a tempered distribution u such that u applied to f where f is the Schwarz class is the same as integral f of x dx e to the power x. There is no such tempered distribution which has this property. It is a little bit of an effort for you but it is not difficult if you really think about it. You need to find a function in the Schwarz class which decays to 0. But when I multiply by e to the power x, the decay will be compensated and the right hand integral will not make sense. So, this exponential function is growing very fast. It will not define a tempered distribution. What about e to the power x cos e to the power x and e to the power x sin e to the power x? You will argue that they are also growing exponentially fast. The amplitude cosine and sine are oscillating but the amplitudes are growing. But we will see very soon that e to the power x cos e to the power x and e to the power x sin e to the power x are both tempered distributions. You try to prove it at this stage, never mind if you get stuck because it will follow from general principles very soon. The next example is a very important example. If f is in the Schwarz class, then what we do is we multiply f of x by 1 by x and want to integrate it. There is a problem because dx upon x will give you trouble near the origin. So, I do not allow you to go close to the origin. From the real line, I scoop out a closed interval minus epsilon epsilon. I scoop out a closed interval minus epsilon epsilon and I compute the integral. Once I scoop out the interval minus epsilon epsilon, the integral makes sense. Of course, it will depend on epsilon. And now I take the limit as epsilon goes to 0. And this limit will exist. That is what you are supposed to show. This limit will exist and so you get a real number. So, f maps to this real number. That is obviously linear. Does it define a tempered distribution? If fn converges to f in the Schwarz class, will integral fnx dx upon x with limit as epsilon goes to 0, will that converge to this, this object? If, if so, you got a yet another distribution that is called pv1 over x. It is called the principal value distribution. You may have encountered this principal value business in elementary complex analysis courses that is related to this. When you compute certain integrals, you have to deal with principal values, Cauchy principal value as you call it. So, this is a principal value distribution. We will continue this 
in the next capsule with these examples and developing the theory further. Thank you very much.